In this third video on the derivation of the Schwarzschild metric, the first three Ricci tensor components are simultaneously solved to determine the form of the first two elements that lie along the diagonal of the metric for this space. The relationship between these elements and Newtonian mechanics is also shown. Uh, so we seek the form of the Schwarzschild metric which describes the space-time surrounding a spherical distribution of matter of mass m. And the space around here has no matter or energy in it. It's empty, and we want to know what is the metric to describe it around this spherical distribution of mass. This mass is not rotating. It is a static space-time, and it has a line element of the form, as we found in the previous two videos. ds squared is this object here. So the metric part of this is diagonal. Right, in the previous video, we found the Ricci tensor components to be R00 is this object, R11 is this one, R22 is that, and R33 is this. Now, to solve for the form of A of R and B of R, we remember that the Ricci tensor was zero in the region outside the mass distribution, and that meant that each of these the Ricci tensor components are also zero. All right, so let's begin by multiplying the zero zero component by B on A and adding to R11. Now, R11 was on the previous page. So B on A times R00 is this object here, plus R11, which is this object here. When we add them together, expand out B on A, expand it out. Go, so that one and R11 here it is. When we add those together, we will see that, for instance, these first two terms, this first term here, and that first term there, cancel out, and some other things will go on as well. And when we work that through, we get negative one on R times this object here in brackets, and that's equal to zero. This one's equal to zero. This one's equal to zero. So the combination of them is also zero. All right, that means the bit in brackets we saw earlier, A dash times B plus A times B dash is zero. And that looks like the product rule that could be expressed as DDR. Remember, each of these are a function of R. So DDR of AB using the product rule or Leibniz rule, the derivative with respect to R of this product here, would give us this object, and that's equal to zero. If we anti-differentiate that, we get AB is equal to a constant, we'll call that constant alpha, and that implies that B is alpha on A. Now we substitute B into R2, 2, 2, sorry, R2, 2, to get R2, 2 is this object here, and we're going to substitute B, is that, into R2, 2, and that will give us A over alpha, where the B is, we put alpha on A, so we get A over alpha here, minus 1, minus RA on 2 alpha, and this object in here, some things will cancel out. A squared and an A here will take an A out from the top of one. This alpha and this alpha will cancel. And when we do that, we get this object here, A over alpha minus 1, that's that object there. Now here, we can add those two terms, so we get minus 2A dash, because that A cancels with each of those, and we're left with this, now the two negatives here become a plus and expand out and the twos cancel out here. So we get plus R A dash on A on alpha minus and minus one here and A over alpha. Now that's all equal to zero. So what we can do is take this minus one over the other side here, make it plus one, so we get A on alpha plus R A dash on alpha. Multiply through by alpha, so we get A plus R A dash, which is the derivative of A with respect to R, and that's equal to alpha. Now again product or Leibniz rule has been applied there because DDR of this product RA, right, will give us this object here, so that's equal to alpha. Anti-differentiate that, we have RA is alpha R plus, this. now this is just a constant, K times alpha, K times alpha is just a constant, and we just choose that way for convenience, as you'll see on the next page. So it implies A of R if we uh, factorize out the alpha, we get 1 plus k on r, uh, and divide through by r these. And we can see that from a previous video on general relativity in the weak field, low speed, 
approximation that this A of R is looking a bit like this object here. Right, from the weak field limit, phi is minus g, a potential function for a point mass m. Uh, what a test mass uh, experience would be bound to it. The potential function would be minus g m on R, as we saw in the last video. That implies that A of R is this object here. Right. Now B is related to A in the form of B is alpha on A, so that's this object here. And so here's our form of B. And so our line interval, or line element, is this object here as we saw earlier, which can now be written as this object, where the B is now being determined. And so the Schwarzschild metric is this object here. 